So I'm going to get started on this portrait, and um, I'm going to jump into Local 5 first, because there are some, some minor little adjustments that need to be made. Uh, whenever you have any uh, accessories on the face, they have to follow the contours of the face. So if this little um, headdress has any beads hanging off of it, what they'll do is they'll 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 move along the contours of the face. So again, let me pull up my handy dandy resource file, just one second, and show you sort of what I mean. When it comes to cast shadows, this also happens. So the way this hangs off is it, it'll hang off. It's kind of asymmetrical, which is kind of throwing off the design. You might want to make it symmetrical. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to create like a consistent fall flow. Like the way it falls, it has a consistent uh, line to it or a gesture. All right, so I'm going to jump into that file. OK, so see this? You see the way these contour lines follow the face? They follow the contours, so they bend when the face grooves. They bend with the hills and valleys. They're not perfectly straight lines. To, to, you know, somewhat, to the untrained eye, they just look like a bunch of straight lines, but they're not. What they've done is they've moved along the contours of the body. Same thing here. They curve, and you can almost trace the top of that edge. Whoopsie. You can almost trace the top of that edge on her arm. Just like this. Sorry about my bit messy desktop. I've just been really busy lately. <clears throat> you can almost see the cube right there. Does everybody see it? Right there is where they start bending. So we see that the cube top of the arm is just over here. And yeah, there's a bunch of fat. Yeah, it's not perfectly cute, but we see the top of it right there, bending almost to a sort of an indiscernible edge, blending with this, and then turning into a harsher edge where the bone gets closer, because the bone is up here. The bone gets closer to the top of the wrist. So you see, whenever you draw any kind of accessories, it becomes very obvious that you need the object before the accessory. The object came first, the accessory came second. So in order to add any accessory, the accessory has to adhere to the rules of the form beneath it. And these rules dictate that this necklace will fall, or this little headdress will fall, on the nose bridge and then fall directly on the face, moving with the contours of the face. So firstly, the necklace, the, the top part of it, the, not like necklace, the headdress, the beads, the top part of it need to sort of work as a symmetry line because they're, 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 they're intending uh, symmetry in the design. So this is, just works as a symmetry line. So if you know where the symmetry line in your face, then you know where to put the bead. There's also areas of the face where the bead won't touch. So let's say we're looking up at the cheek, and this is the nose. The bead will fall. The beads, the, the, the I don't know what it is, the jewelry will fall from one nose side to the cheek top, to the highest point of the cheek, so here and here. This area is going to be suspended, so all we're going to get is a cast shadow. So you see, there are some, it's, it's so important to think about how we're layering these objects together, the depth involved. How are we representing depth? Of course, in a reference, it's going to teach you exactly where the cast shadows are and where the necklace is. But does everyone know what I mean when I'm saying, so we're looking up at the lips, and these are uh, up at the face, and these are the lips, this is the nose, and this is the headdress from the sides. There are areas where it's going to be suspended. Does everyone know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Hello, Jess. Oh, Beeble Rocks. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome everyone who is new. Yeah, like looking from below. The beads are not glued to the face. Exactly, Addo. They're not tattooed. Like unless they're tattooed, then yeah. But they don't look like they're tattooed. They look like a, they look like a um, you know, a headdress uh, attachment. You also had a little bit of a little bit of a bump that I had to fix with liquify, and what that was telling me it was telling me that for some reason at this point it defied gravity for only this little little microsecond and then and then it just went back you know toward falling so that's not that, that doesn't happen what happens is a consistent gravity pull so the, so the object will sort of 
get a pretty consistent curve on it. It's not going to curve to the side unless gravity suddenly curved here or there was a magnet here and then it sort of changed the, 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 the beads direction, beads, the curve of the beads direction. But when you have drapery from one hard edge to another, like between houses, if you have uh, a hammock from one tree, if you have something as small as a string held from one finger to the other, they're all going to bend in a consistency. They're going to have the apex or the, to the, the, the lowest point, and it's going to be pretty symmetrical from one point to the other and not unless there's motion. Those are just basic physics rules, and you can see them consistent throughout anything. You don't need to be a physicist to, have, to observe this science. So what we're seeing here is what we need to see is, first of all, the points of contact, so the two fingers that are holding the string, so the ear or the top of the cheek are the two areas where th we're going to have some uh, suspension in between. Then this is where the bead suspends, and then after this point, when we get reach the outer quarters of the edge, so you know the face is divided into four quarters, we've got one, two, three, and four. Well, one, two, and three, because this is three-quarter view, we're not seeing all the fours. Um, once you enter this side, we know that this is the cube. All right, so we know that this is the cube area. At this point, the bead hits another angle. So we got the nose, we got the cheek, and then we've got the edge of the head right here. So the bead does something like wraps around. Let's pretend the bead is the blue. Goes from the nose, sticks onto the cheekbone, because those are the two highest points. Finger, finger, and then string, and then the string goes starts to wrap around. So at this point, that's when we're going to have a break in that even suspension. So it's going to be even suspension and then some sort of contour along the side of the cheek. Alright, and then underneath here is where we're going to have the cast shadow. So I'm just explaining it, I will be doing it, I'll be demonstrating it. Um, there's also some symmetry issues with the face. Um, whenever you guys do uh, faces, you always seem to um, unrender or forget about sort of what happens with cheekbones in three-quarter view. Alright, so at this point you're telling me that she has zero cheekbone on this side because there is no major shading. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take down all the grays a notch lower. I'm going to take these down as well. I'll put them back later. It's too dark for your taste. And I'm going to do liquify first. The eyebrow in this point is ex doing a very cartoony expression. Eyebrows don't do this unless you're in a really late age. If you want to show sternness, not anger, sternness, it's very easy, easy to show sternness. Where you, you don't have to overcompensate and use age to represent sternness. Because re remember, you're drawing, and everything you're going to do is going to be a caricature of what the original looks like. There's always that, that distance factor. Whenever we're drawing, we're drawing a, an exaggerated version of what's real. So you never want to overdo an expression because it will look like something else entirely. All right, so before, after. The sternness was being translated as age. I see lots of old ladies have this kind of face because that's sort of how their face um, sagged down over the years. The word sag is so funny. Okay? So she will still have sternness to her. And sternness can be achieved by very, very minimal strokes beneath the eyebrow. Just enough that we're getting, you know, a, a, an expression that reads. And never, never paint accessories while you paint the face, because you the accessories will ruin the way you paint the face. They will manipulate the, 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 the contours and they will, they will sort of distract you. They'll sabotage you. The nose as well. I'm not sure if you measured. You guys need to measure. If you skip measuring, it will be obvious. There's no way to get away with it. There's no way to get away with it. And I'm not even going to say it unless you're a master because you, you guys wouldn't be here if you were masters. I want to I want to be really really strict with this is if you don't measure it will be very obvious the nose nostril was all the way near the edge of the mouth 
this eye was all was leading all the way out. That that's a that's a that's something that results out of lack of measurement, not not drawing the horizontal lines and the vertical lines, not measuring how you want to compress this three quarter view. And guess what? I have a video available on how to measure three quarter view. Okay. So there's a video out there in my channel and in, in, in on my channel that shows. Um, uh, how to measure it, how to how, how a three-quarter view compresses. So, oh, happy birthday, Musico. Congratulations on your birthday. Um, so, um, so please remember that measurement helps you avoid fixing unfixable detail issues later on. You're going to have to paint over all those details, and they will show once you start rendering. Asymmetry is a big, big deal, and symmetry is a big, big deal in portraiture. It's the biggest deal that's what the face is, it's symmetrical. If we were the kinds of creatures where our faces didn't have to be symmetrical, and if they were symmetrical, it'd be freaky, that's another thing. But in our dimension, they have to be symmetrical. In order to achieve beauty, anyway. That's sort of what beauty is, symmetry. Okay, so I'm adding some contour shadows that represents some sort of protrusion in the eyebrow and the eye structure. So I'm thinking about it as a 3D form. I'm darkening the eyes along a solid, sort of consistent shade in the eye area. Alright, your darks are a bit dark, but I, I can't really fix them right now. And you see what I just did? I, all I did was I added white here, darks here, and I got this gray, this, this medium gray, and brushed it over the eye. That's all I did. What, what those little shades did was made the eye pop. You already had that one. It made it pop. You made it seem like the eye is this um, sort of, you know, like the, it all recedes down like, the, like, a, like a, I don't know, like a rice farmer hat looked at from above. That's what the eye really is. It protrudes. It sticks out. This this is closer to us than this. This is closer. That's what we want to represent, that the eye sticks out, catches light on its sides, like a 3D object would. And these are its sides. Some of its sides are shaded, like we have here, and some of its sides are lit, depending on where the light source is coming from. So in this case, the shadow would be down here. The light would be up here and on the sides. And that's what we've done. We represent it as the eye as a sticking out object. <clears throat> Alright, and then when I bring in the highlights now, the highlights will be placed, kind of look back to that little uh, thingy that I just drew, the high points of those high points. Okay, so the high point of the brow bone, and then back to that cheekbone issue, the cheekbone is a high, bo high, high point as well on the face, and it needs to, needs to have a, a little bit of consideration. There's also the shadow of the temple. And then there's the shadow beneath the cheek. It can be subtle. And this leads down towards the lips. If you want to represent youth, if you don't want to represent that much youth, throw that shadow back in. All right, same thing with the lips. Where's the high point of the lips? a nice sharpness you had here. The high point of the lips is on this side. Don't think symbolically and just throw the high point of the lips like all the way across. That's not good. <laughs> Man, I'm so retarded today. Um, or like over here, you know, or throw some light over here because one time you did a study back three years ago in art class and your teacher said, oh, nice lips, and now you, like, you're officially going to draw those lips for the rest of your life even though the lighting is completely off. Don't do that. Don't fall trap into that. Don't fall into that trap. Um, no English today. <clears throat> you want to make sure that you're shading as, as, as the subject requires, as, as, as what is in front of you. Don't shade symbolically. Just trust your eye. Trust the physics that you know are prevalent. And they'll tell you, remember? Be confident with your use of the cube. The cube will give you some level of control. And it'll tell you what to do. So I'm thinking about the cube, that's it. And, you know, I can't keep explaining what the cube is. So I'll do a, I'll try my best to make some more 
concise videos about the stuff I refer to all the time. You know, the things that I say. I've been meaning to make a video about the ogre and the elf. You know, explaining shit about beauty and stuff. <laughs> Swore. And that was necessary. My eyes are always on the navigator. I'm zoomed up here. This is something I never do. But I'm zoomed up for you guys. Because I know the quality is lost when I zoom out. And my eye is literally on the navigator. Every brush stroke that I do, I go straight back to the navigator. I will zoom out now, though. I'm only human. <laughs> okay. So I'm just thinking about the high points. Of the face. Now that I shaded the cheek to look something like this, I know the other cheek has to respond to it. So this might not be how you wanted to shade the face, but the other cheek has to respond. And there's a high point on this cheek that I have to render <clears throat> and represent as a high point. I uh, still very asymmetrical. Sorry I'm not looking at the chat. This eye is hooded, this eye is not, so I'm just gonna throw a nice little hood over it. Hood is just fat. Don't out outline the eyebrows. Like what is this? Like let me show you what see? See this 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 is not necessary. Don't be afraid. Just you know, don't be afraid. Just shade it if you gotta shade it. If it's in the shade, the eyebrow doesn't have a halo around it. You guys draw as if there's halos around everything. You don't need to. And this half of the face wouldn't even be that dark anyway. Alright? Don't do that. It's okay. It's okay. Don't be so afraid. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. It's, it's anxiety and fear. That's what leads you guys into, you know, depending on the symbols or depending on something, a crutch, or I don't know what it is that you guys might have developed over the years, but you probably would use it at that point where you're like, oh shit, 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 what do I do here, what do I do here, and then you just throw anything down just so that you can keep drawing. Because that's what you want to do, you want to keep drawing. And then there's, there's stuff that you don't know that gets in your way and gives you hell. Sometimes just, you know, have confidence in the cube. The cube will say, listen, if you listen to me, you listen to my contours, you remember back to what forms me, then anything you add to me, will still make sense because it's still attached to me and as long as it's in my shadow or in my light spot you'll know how to shade it and this goes for you know cube on a cube on a cube on a cube on a cube until it starts to look like a human being after you've rendered it in Maya so it'll still it will make sense you will not lose anything if you throw a shadow over that eyebrow you're fine there isn't that much you know space for failure once you think about where the cube sits on that face. Alright, so the reason why I'm shading the eyebrow here a little bit lighter is because the light lightens that area of the eyebrow. The ear is a little bit to the side, it should be tucked in. It's kind of elevated. It should just be tucked into the sides, like that. Probably going to ruin this. Okay. I'm going to tuck that chin in. So does everyone know what I mean when I say once, once you find that cube, once you find the main shades, the core shadow, that's basically what they are in the core lights, there's no more anxiety. For instance, your use of the line here, that's, that's something that you, either you're not done yet or a remnant of your dependency on lines. Literally just get your brush and brush it away. You do not need it. All you need is the background color and its contour against this edge. That's it. And we already see an edge and we see a background. There is no need for excessive shading. Hey, hey, look, this is an edge. Trust me, trust me, it's an edge. Here you go, here, have a line. It's an edge, I swear to God. You know, we don't need that. As long as there's co contrast between two major shades and no blending in between them, it means that at one point, this object stopped existing and the other object started. All right, so the face on the background. So you guys see what I'm see what I'm doing here? You don't need the line anymore. Yeah, there's no there's no lines in real life. It's okay if you, if it's a mistake. It's okay if it was made accidentally. I'm still gonna give you shit for it <laughs> because that's my job. 
I'm not supposed to forgive you for those tiny mistakes because, of course, pointing to them means that, you know, that you're going to have a, a better chance at remembering this mistake and avoiding it later. So I'm saturating the criticism a little bit because it means that you're going to be listening more. And there's going to be repetition. Repetition is sort of how we practice anything. All right, so that's all I'm doing. Edges, removing lines, anything that's, you know, cre creating excessive indication is not necessary. I'm going to add a little bit of um, extra beads to here so that we can follow it. along the face, and then I'm going to shrink these ones so they can have like a sort of consistent shape, and then I'm going to cast a very, very simple shadow beneath. I'm just going to get a new layer, throw a bunch of, you know, mess, and then use my eraser. As you, as you can tell, this is my method. I just uh, erase away what I don't need. <clears throat> and the shadow that I'm throwing on is a shadow very similar to those cast shadows I showed you earlier with those photographs. I blur it. Shadow gets darker the closer it gets to an object. The further away it gets, the, the fuzzier it is. So all I'm going to do is erase the middle part of this shadow. That way it looks like a real cast shadow. Do you see? It gets sharper the closer it gets because there's less chance for the light to fuzz it up. Too much. Right, and so when we look at this side, I'm just going to brush away this part of the <coughs> this face. This side here, this is where it will really show that it's suspended between the cheek and the nose. And again, just a delicate shadow. Just a delicate shadow underneath. Trying to think about where the light source is. The shadow might not be that visible because the light source is sort of shining it back toward the area of the of that little thing. The doohickey that's hanging. The 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 the, the beads. Just been calling them the beads. And now I want to place in some dark dark. So I'm just going to get the darkest shade you've used on the face, and I'm going to place them in only the areas, the small, small areas that, that need all that dark. So it would be the deepest part of the eyebrow, the darkest part of the eye, which is the pupil, any complementary makeup that's used along the eye, lash line, or wherever, the nostril, and the lip corner, and these I call the, does anyone know what I call these? <laughs> she doesn't need those, actually, I'm just going to darken this. What do I call the, <laughs> any ardent fans? <clears throat> Dark spots, yeah! <laughs> yeah. So let me see what you guys are saying. It's really hard to paint over lines for me. Yeah, me too. I don't know. I can't get rid of them. Six dark spots of the face. Yes. Um, why can't you get rid of them? What do you think is the main reason? Like you uh, observing yourself. Why do you think you can't? The nose needs a tiny bit of, of rendering. Thinking about where the light source is, if that side of the nose even needs that light, that shadow. <clears throat> Can't do liner and paint, so I just throw down paint and work around it. Yeah, the right needs a dark spot, too. Yeah, it does. I will do that. Thank you. Hello. Uh, because I think in 2D and not 3D. Exactly. That's why you depend on your lines. Lines are stamps. What did I just write? Write it back to me. Lines are what? I said lines are what? Lines are stamps. What does that mean? Does anyone know what that means? Does, does anyone know what that means? <laughs> I told you my English is completely out the door today. Stomps. <laughs> stamps. What does that mean? Tramps. 
stamp, you know, like, you know that thing they put on the ink and you're like, bam, bam, declined, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know that thing that, that people use on fucking university applications, um, no form, representation of edges, not the actual shape, silhouette, I saw the word silhouette in there somewhere, where, 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 um, yeah, stamps equals representation of shape, silhouette, what are they missing? What are stamps essentially dimension wise? They're missing the Z depth, exactly. So you can't depend on them if you're trying to paint in the third dimension. They can only help you, and then after that, they'll tell you where to go. It's like that journey, you know, if you're on a spiritual journey, and then you have a guide, and the guide's like, I can only help you here. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Um, that's pretty much what lines are. They're obsolete. They can't do the journey for you. You gotta go in there and discover your inner... <laughs> you gotta discover your inner self. Um, you know, after that, that one mountain or two. Alrighty? Yeah. <laughs> deal, <laughs> deal with my stupidity today. Um, like a spirit guide or something. Alright, so I'm just pushing this back towards the symmetry line. Shading the rest of the face away from the light. Anything that's towards the light will be prevalent. If you want to show some more sternness, this little eyebrow light, like I said, tiny bit of rendering, and look at the sternness. Bam! 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 Stern. Instant stern. Before. Stern. Before. Oh, it's okay, I'm cool, I just am emotionless, waiting for the bus. Where's this bus? <laughs> Alright? <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I don't think I have a sense of humor, I think I just have a sense of stupid, and you guys laugh at <laughs> um, <clears throat> Thank you very much, I appreciate you thinking I'm a good teacher. Okay, but do you guys see? Do you guys see this? Minimal rendering, tiny little dot of light, just to show that the eyebrows are extra creased, an extra high in this one area catching some light. Just like that. Now we have stern. We don't have to exaggerate the eyebrows. Want to know why you exaggerated the eyebrows, Misiko? Because you thought that, okay, hmm, I'm thinking back to what's, you know, what's dark, you know, what's, what's mean, what's, 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 what's really stern and, and tough. Hmm, angry eyebrows. Yeah, I'm thinking of this. This is the image your, your silly little brain. Nah. <laughs> Alright, that's what your brain gave you. That's what your brain gave you. For me, when I, whenever I draw anyone smiling, I love to draw stern people. Whenever I draw anything smiling, my stupid little brain gives me this. That's it. I cannot work around it. It's all I see. It's the dumbest thing. I don't know what it is. I need to meditate for like days, maybe go on a spiritual journey so that I can stop thinking about it. If, if you guys have looked at any of my drawings that smile, you'll notice that... It looks it literally looks like this. I, I swear to God. All right. So if you think about these in your mind, these are called symbols. These are things in your brain out to sabotage your artistic journey. All right. They are the obstacles and the golems that in your in your <laughs> in your journey, your spiritual journey, that try to ruin your life um, and make you fail and kill your guide and <clears throat> I don't know. Know, something that happened to Oedipus or something like that. <clears throat> Marry your mother, kill your father. <laughs> your sister is both your daughter and your sister. Anyways, um, uh, please avoid symbols in your mind because they will make you, uh, they will embody themselves. They will possess your drawing and, um, and, make, and make you do this, make you do something like, like this just so that you can have some sternness. It's, it's not going to do that. It's a caricature of, 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 the, of the expression. It's an exaggeration of the expression. If you want to add shadows that extend to here, they're only going to be shadows. It's not going to be the actual object in question, which is the eyebrow. Alrighty. And yes, I missed the dark spot on the eye. Excuse me. My mistake. A little bit of shadow here. Try to always identify what kind of eye you're drawing. Is it a deep set eye? Is it, um, is it you, know, you know, what kind of eye is it? Is it hooded? Is it wide set? Is it downturned? You know, this this is a makeup thing that I used to use when I was a makeup artist. And what I used it for was sort of to help me how to correct someone's eyes. Basically, some people have odd eyes. And so in makeup, what you have to do is correct it. Especially brides. They want to look like, anyways. 
Um, um, so what you do is if it's down set, you don't put any sh eyeshadow on the bottom. You try to correct it by overcompensating with shadow on the top. So if you identify what kind of eye you're dealing with, then you know exactly where to place the shadow. So this is, you know, it's, it's from a different school of thought, but technically it, it's pretty much connected to art, which is when you're doing um, uh, a certain kind of eye, identify where these shadows tend to happen. So you're not trying to correct in art, you're trying to find the actual organic shadows. So you do not add shadow to the top if you're trying to do, do downturn eyes because it will not look downturned anymore. Close set eyes do not put shadows on the outer areas because you're just going to be fixing them. You want to make close set eyes look close so don't place any shadows on the eye. Just make sure the measurement itself is taking care of the closeness. Hooded eyes do not put any, any shadow near the top so that's what we're dealing with here. We're trying to not put any shadow on the top. We are literally just throwing light because that's what it is. It's a mountain. So the mountain top, the mountain peak always gets light. Just like that. That's what we're doing. And we're choosing a high point, and that's where the highlight goes. All right. So identify what kind of eye. Where's the fat? Where's the high points? Where's the low points in that kind of eye that you're drawing? So that you create one that looks real. You know, you don't create the same old eye every time. You try to vary it a little bit, and it looks... Um, it looks more organic, more believable, more real, more like alive. Like alive. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm just going to throw a shadow extending over down toward the nose. The nose corner in this case is over here. So yeah, don't let your brains trick you into... into into drawing symbolically. You, you've, you've crossed the line of symbolic, all right? You started, you picked up a, sh a, sh a brush and you started shading. <laughs> Once you did that, it was over. You, there's no forgiveness. If you tell me, hey, Ista, I want to I shade realistically, I bring out a different kind of gun. I bring out a different kind of weapon to deal with you. If, if you're drawing anime and you're using lines, I'm pretty much not strict about the form and the structure and all. You know me. I'm okay with it. But if you're trying to mix the two, it's either or, you know, it's do or die. Um, and at that point, I'm going to be pretty strict with you. And I'm going to say, yeah, you're doing symbolic. It's not going to work. In anime, you can do, you can do that freaky, I, you can do that freaky um, emotion that I did. You can literally just do this. All right. Take away these sad excuses for eyelids. And you get that face that I talked about. You can literally get away with the, with with all the caricature, all all the symbols, all the emotional symbols. You can get away with all of them. It's starting to look like Luffy, Miss Luffy, right? See, that's all. That's what cartoon. That's what separates the world of anime from here. That's not how the face works in real life, and that's what you're trying to embody. You're trying to embody embody a little bit of the real life, a little bit of real life in there. I'm going to cast the shadow of the chin. And I think that's it for this face. Um, I'm going to sharpen it. Sharpen. Because I don't want to take away from the detail. Whenever you sharpen it, ups the contrast, so beware. And as for everything else, um, you know, just keep rendering. You might want to extend this horn up here. So it looks like it's symmetrical. Um, it would be more like this for the other horn, because this one ended here, well this one ends up here. So why, you know, make it, make sure that it's a symmetrical. The same lines you're using for the eyes and the nose and this, the same kind of compression. Remember, it's not foreshortening, it's compression. Some of you try foreshortening in three-quarter view and that's just wrong, because there's not enough distance between between us and the far side for us to have foreshortening actually happen. And the dis image is distorted. That happens when there is a great deal of distance. <clears throat> All right. So there's that. Before, after. So it is darker. I did make it a little bit darker because that's how I like to work. But if you do want to make the background a little bit lighter, um, 
Let me see if I can do that for you. Just so that I don't deviate too much away from your style. And you can have that contrast, which is always a nice touch. All right, so before, after. Before, after. Still sternness, still looks like, you know, a tired princess. I think that's what you were going for. I'm not really sure. You know, like a stern lady. I'm not even sure if it's a woman. I'm so sorry if it's a man. If I uh, if I shade it as if it was a if it was a woman. Same rules apply. You can still have it as a man. You just have to make it less of a, a triangle near the bottom and more of a square. Like let's make it a man. So what I would do is I would just extend the ch the jawline, increase the size of the nose. Oops. Shrink the eyes and then sort of move them at less of an arch. You want it to be a guy. Thicker neck. You just sort of have to work around. Lower cheekbone. Heavier jaw. I mean uh, brow bone sort of the guy version. And then you've got girl, guy, girl. It's going to take you a second to adjust. And you'll be like, oh, it's a girl. Oh, that's a guy. Oh, that's a girl. Guy, girl, guy, girl. Right? That's how you do it. It's basic stuff. Um, and it, if, as long as you know the signifiers, they're going to help you. Um, and, um, you know, that's it. So, Mizuko, was it a guy or a girl? Tell her. So you guys saw what I did to make it a guy, just a lot wider jawline. Basically, I brought in the ogre. I called in the ogre. I used my ogre card. <coughs> and I do have some videos and some other critique hours that I did that explain the difference between male and female faces, but um, that was pretty much it. The signifier, I'll just cover it now just so that I don't you know, be a bitch. Um, basically, you just want to create the opposite. So, if this is a female, the male is like this. So, smaller, oops, the male is like this. So, smaller eyes, wider mouth, nose is a little bit bigger, jawline is a little bit bigger, cheekbones are lower, no arch in the brow like a female arch. You know, just think tranny. Trans, trans <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's a really rude term. Just think transvestite. You know, the way they just overdo their eyebrows like that. Um, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, lower eyebrow. The eyebrow has a, a you know a lower, more straight feel to it. Larger nose. So plus, 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 plus wider lip range, and then you get the guy. And then the opposite of that is just girls. Larger eyes, smaller mouth, smaller, smaller nose, smaller mouth, and you get back to the to the baby face. Okay, okay. Before, you had a bit of a caricature with the face. It looked more sour. Like, you can do this expression in real life, but is that really the expression you want to embody in this portrait drawing? Do you want to have her just, like, scowling at the artist, like, fuck you, artist? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, guys are ogre. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Let me do a little quick little thing that I've been wanting. Screw the separate video. I'll just do it now. All right. What's the difference between boys and girls? I might not get to the other critique, uh, but it's okay. What's the difference? What is what is the ogre and what is the elf? All right, everybody pay attention. No, that's not even. That's not even, Steven. That's even, okay, whatever. And then there's the midpoint right over here, I guess. Nope. Right here. All right. Okay. So this is the beautiful. This is the elf. What the hell? And this is the ogre. All right. So this is the elf. What does the elf look like? The elf looks like, oh, I'm an elf. I'm a pretty elf. Alright, just give me a sec. Let me just draw a stupid fucking L. Start 
for an elf. Okay, so this is considered cute. All right, got the hair and the elf ears. All right, this is the ogre. This is what I usually draw for the ogre face. So he's got the stupid ears, he's got the mad mouth, he's got the big brows, and he's got the massive nose. Poor guy. <laughs> he's got the small head and he's got the big jaw. Alright, and this is sort of the elf. Okay, I screwed that up. She's like, oh, I'm an elf. Ooh, I'm so pretty. All right. All right, so what's the difference between this person and this person? Um, all right. This is an average face. It's got a little bit of ogre and a little bit of elf. Let's say you have a model on, your, on a poster on your wall if you're like 12 and you think that they're really hot and she, you think she's really pretty. Where she is technically is probably up here. She's probably up here. She's probably got a lot of elf in her. Let's say you think someone in a movie is particularly ugly and you say, damn that actor's ugly. What the fuck? It's probably somewhere over here. Okay? Okay, so this is, this is basically where they are on the map. Someone here neither satisfies your desire for symmetry, nor do they satisfy your desire for asymmetry. Someone here is non-beautiful and non-ugly. Alright, this is really vain. This is like the worst shit ever. But that's technically what we have to learn if we want to draw artists. If we want to be an artist and we want to draw different kinds of faces. If you want to make a girl look less like an elf, you just have to shift her over here. She still hasn't crossed the line into ugly. Alright, this is beautiful and this is ugly. She still hasn't crossed the line into ugly. There are guys that can sit on this as well, but they're mostly sitting over here and over here. If a guy crosses into this realm, he will just simply be confused as a woman all the time because people will not be able to associate the signifiers of his face with that of a male's, which is that of an ogre. So you don't have to cross the line. So when I said, this is the reason why I'm saying this is because you guys think that I, I said all men are ugly. No, not all men are ogres. No, 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 it's not true. What I mean is you have more ogre in you, but you haven't yet crossed the ogre line. All right? You haven't cr yet crossed into the ogre world. All right? So do you guys get this? Get me or, or not? Does anyone get me here? So what, 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 what exactly have I talked about? Can anyone write it down in a sentence or two? What, what have I just said, technically? Hmm? Can anyone reiterate it back to me? There's a range between perceived genders. Yes, exactly. Thank you for that beautiful, eloquent way of putting it. Elf and ogre. And as artists, you have to learn either extreme if you want to draw either an elf or an ogre. Um, so, you know, if I were to rate myself, I'm a girl and I look like a girl and I probably am somewhere here, but I'm not some sort of supermodel. And I know I'm not over here. You know what's over here at the, at the smack dab right at the very end of this? Guess. Can anyone guess what is all the way over here? And it's not human. It's not a human. Can anyone guess what's over here? Cat. Thank you, Michelle. Cat. A cat. That's why cats are all over the internet. Because that's what exactly they are. They are the epitome. You know, it's like, I don't know, it's like God was like, let me make the most cute thing in the world and give it teeth. And I'll just fuck with the humans like that. All right? They are the end all and be all of beauty. And that's exactly what they are. If you look at, you know, the character design for Toothless, you think the person who, care who designed Toothless didn't think about this, this map here? Of course they thought about this map. The person who designed, you know, in, in, in that one movie, what's it called, Super 8, after he opens his eyes and they humanize him, of course he knows about this map. The person who designed the Uruk-hai in, in, in Lord of the Rings. The person who designed the ogres. You think they don't know about this map? 
those are those are you know movie high production quality character design that we're talking about here and they depend on this map to illustrate either the elf or the ogre so so let me bring up some pictures so a cat or toothless or anything you found terribly unbearably cute even a dog or, or like an, uh, an otter or something is over here is on the elf side right over here cute cat I'm just gonna find the cutest fucking cat you ever seen and I'm gonna put it right there <laughs> Okay, come on. Come on, you can do it. Alright. So that cat goes right over here. Let me find you the scariest fucking ogre in the world. <clears throat> okay. Now this fucker right here I hated him. He freaked the crap out of me. Does everyone get this now? <laughs> this is this is major stuff you have to learn. If you if someone comes up to you, hey, here's six hundred dollars, make me the cutest thing ever. I'm, I want to make a movie out of it, and um, I need a character that is really really super cute, and you know really spunky. And they give you this whole character design, you know this whole character description, and they want you to 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 draw something cute for them. You'll know where they are on the map. You know a human can never be on this map. Maybe they can, but again, they'd have to have some cat qualities to them. So go to any Disney movie, look at the faces of the Disney princesses, it is a cat. The face is a cat, just with a human mouth and a human nose. Alright? So, um, yeah, this ogre gave me nightmares. Oh god, he wants to nibble their legs. <laughs> um, so yeah, remember this. You don't have to cross the border into ugly to this if you um, if you just want to add some level of masculinity you just have to you know maybe the jawline gets a little wider but not that wide maybe the eyebrows get a little heavier the cheekbones lower down a little bit but not that low they just get they just turn into a man so this is where men are ideally remember this is ideals this is not how things are in real life so feminists just put down your pitchforks um, so <laughs> this is men is right over here. Women are probably, you know, the most beautiful woman you've ever seen is right over there. Alright. And then we've got <clears throat> and then we've got, okay, let's say, um, you know, old people. I'm so sorry, old people. I love you. You're all so sweet. I wish I had a grandma myself. Old people are probably so so sorry. Right over here. Old people. There are some old people that have still a lot of beauty in them, and they're probably right, right over there. So this is like Helen Mirren. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Helen Mirren, but this is pretty much where you sit. All right, but this guy, he's like somewhere over here. The ugliest of the ugly is probably, and I'm so sorry for this image. This image will haunt you for the rest of your lives, but... I'm literally Googling ugly person right now. This is all for design, for the sake of art. All right. Uh -huh. I'm so sorry for whoever this is. It's just, it's an image, a regular, it's a regular image on the internet of that one girl with the really bad teeth. Um, I can't find her. <laughs> I don't want to use this guy. Oh my god, where is she? I don't want to use like anyone that exists like I think it's a Photoshop image but it's that one person okay oh my god I found it holy god of gods oh my god <laughs> oh my Jesus okay this is the <laughs> oh god help us <laughs> this is probably the final final <clears throat> frontier. <laughs> this is what you face on the final level. This is the final boss. <laughs> okay? Right over here. And this is pretty much the ogre. 
If you can't see the triangle, I will illustrate it for you. That's probably like. <laughs> okay. These two things are not the same. <laughs> okay. I won't zoom in. Oh, God, help us all. All right. So you can see how this person has old person features. So you'll probably find an old guy that looks just like this. Um, you know, minus the purple skin, minus the bloodshot eyes. I mean, the you know the, the eyes that look like that. He'll probably just look like an old guy going to the deli to get some to get some meats for breakfast or or lunch. All right, he just looks like he's waiting in line. Probably needs an oxygen tank. You know, has the oxygen. All right, he just looks like an old man or that guy who can't breathe from Insidious Three. Insidious Three was a really good movie, by the way. They're not paying me to say this. I recommend you watch it. It's really good. Freak the shit out of me though. <clears throat> All right, so um, yeah, this is the map. Beautiful, middle point, average, and hell. <laughs> All right, you don't have to get all the way over here. This is ultimate ogre. You don't have to be all the way over here to have some level of masculinity or some heinousness or some ugliness in your character design. If you want to have beauty, you don't have to be all the way at the end of this in order to have a beautiful character. They can be somewhere over here. Just know how much ogre you have or how little. So when I say add a little bit of ogre, all I mean is just shift. Shift just a little bit. I don't mean go all the way over here and draw this guy. Oh my god, no. I'm just, I can't even look at him. I'm just saying, um, just add a little bit of, you know, shift the triangle. So the triangle looks less like this and more like this. Maybe a little bit more like this. Maybe... You know, it's starting to do something like this, and that's basically where men are right now. Men are squares. And then maybe if the, you want to make them a little bit uglier, it starts to get like this. And then, of course, there's the absolute flip of this whole thing, which is... All right. These, these two are not comparable. They are not comparable in any way, shape, or form. But that's the lesson today. That's what beauty is, and that's what ugliness is. By our standards, by our ideals, by function. You know, this person doesn't look like they're very healthy because they have no eyebrows. Like, I can sit here for like 30 minutes and make this person beautiful again. I just have to shrink their nose. The nose doesn't have to be that large. It can be a pretty, you know, overwhelming feature on a face. Um, if it just, you know, if it exits the proportions. You can have a wide masculine nose and still look fucking hot. But that's, you know, as long as it's starting to starting to exit the proportion, exit the appropriate amount of width required for a nose, and you start to look like an ogre. At that point, call your rhino. <laughs> so sorry. Call your plastic surgeon, because you're going to just scare people. I'm so sorry. That's just a dumb joke. I'm very joking. I'm very joking right now. All right? <clears throat> okay. So that's the lesson. Um, before, after. A little bit of ogre. Do you see the tiny bit of ogre you had? Just in the lower bit, bit of the width. So you didn't have a lot of ogre. I just took away some ogre when I chose the gender. All right? <laughs> Could I put the kitten over the ogre? <laughs> no, the lesson has to be learned. The lesson must be learned. This will be embedded in your minds. If you want to be, you know, artists worth your salt, here it is right here. Okay, <laughs> deal with it. Let it burn in your in your in your scalp. In your, I mean, wow, why scalp? In your face. I mean, in your brain. Okay. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, I hope today didn't freak the crap out of you guys too much. That's a bit of a, a condensed. Um, have a great day. Bye bye.